Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Welcome to my third installment in my series of Getting Better Birds in Flight images. In this video, I'm talking about exposure. Multiple ways you can expose your images, multiple ways you can set up your camera to capture the correct exposure for birds in flight. You got shutter priority, aperture priority, you want to shoot auto ISO, how about full manual? where you have total control over the exposure of your birds in flight. If you're interested in knowing how I do it, what I think is probably the best way to do it, stay tuned. Okay, so we're talking about exposure when we're shooting birds in flight. And the thing about shooting birds in flight is different than shooting perched birds, birds bopping around in a bush a little bit, is that we're talking about full in-flight bird photography now. So the bird is traveling a long distance relative to where it started and where it ends or when it leaves the, the area. And <clears throat> the unique thing about that is that during that flight, a lot of times, the bird will transition between all sorts of different backgrounds. Luminosities, the brightness of the backgrounds can change in a split second from something very bright to mid-tonal to dark to bright again in, in very split second timings. And so it's very difficult then to try to uh, get an accurate exposure on a bird that's transitioning through all of these different background brightnesses, if that's the way you want to put it, if you shoot in any of the priority modes for exposure that your camera has, such as aperture priority, shutter priority, auto ISO. Why? Because when you're in a priority mode, that essentially means, we'll just use aperture priority as an example, you're prioritizing that one parameter, aperture. The other parameter, main one anyway, your shutter speed is going to then be free to be changed by your camera based on the meter reading that your camera is getting. And is it metering off of the bird? That little bird out there, a lot of times these things aren't filling the frame. No, especially if you've got your metering set to say evaluative metering where it's taking most of the frame into account or if it's even center weighted or even spot metering. Spot metering, try to keep that spot on the bird and get that meter to meter off of just that bird when it's flying. That's not easy and it really doesn't happen uh, hardly at all. So if you're in any of the priority modes, like say like aperture priority, it's gonna change a parameter and aperture priority is gonna change your shutter speed and it's going to change it to make the overall scene or whatever correctly exposed, not your bird. So if your bird is flying in consistent light, and that's what we're after here, that's what I'm after. I want my bird flying through an area of really nice light. That's how I've set up the scenario for the shoot that morning or something like that. You know, there may be shadows over here or whatever, but this really nice light out front is where I want the bird and it's gonna transition through there and it's gonna be in consistent light, but the background luminosities might change from blue sky, like I said, very bright, mid-tonal trees maybe, dark, dark water here in Florida. The bird goes against water here in Florida most of the time, and unless you're out at the ocean or something like that, it's gonna be very, very dark. And so what's gonna be happening is the camera's gonna be changing your exposure based on the background and not based on the bird. So. For an example, you got a black or a dark bird up against a bright blue sky and you're shooting aperture priority. What's gonna happen is it's, the camera's gonna pump up the shutter speed really, really high, trying to compensate and get the sky exposed correctly. Not really worried about your bird. Bird's taking up a very small percentage of the frame. It's gonna, it's gonna drop that exposure down to get the sky looking nice and your bird's gonna be way, way too dark. Opposite uh, <clears throat> scenario, you've got a white bird against that blue sky that's fine, okay? Drops down against that dark water though, 
and now it's looking at an overall dark scene your camera is the meter it's going to drop your shutter speed down to let's say for example one five hundredth of a second brighten up that background and now your white bird's going to be blown out so that as you can tell any of the priority modes for exposure really are not the way to go when it goes to shooting birds in flight if the bird's going to be transitioning against different brightnesses of backgrounds and that can happen a lot and it can happen very very quickly so trying to you know work with exposure compensation and stuff like that in a split second to try to change things as as something's developing in front of you a fast bird in flight just really isn't isn't feasible <clears throat> so how do we get around that well that the answer is pretty obvious there's a manual full manual exposure setting for for all these cameras as well <clears throat> at least most of the cameras that we're talking about when we're shooting this this level of photography birds in flight and that's the way to go because now you can set the exposure for your bird in the light that you want it to be in the, the scenario that we've set up nice light maybe the sunrise behind you nice light right out in front from here all the way over to here you've got great light this is where we want the bird to be flying and doing its stuff you set your uh, manual exposure your shutter speeds high enough for birds in flight you got the right aperture you got the right iso you set it there it's for your bird and now no matter what this overall scene's luminosity is as that bird flies around and does all sorts of awesome stuff in front of you the bird's going to continually be exposed correctly now it's up to you of course to set that exposure correctly but if you do that it's not, the camera is not going to be in a position. You're not going to let it change your exposure based on the background luminosity. It's going to be set for the bird. And if you did a good job, your, all, of your, all of your exposures of your bird are going to be right on the money and you're good to go. And so that's really the main point here is shooting full manual exposure for birds in flight is going to give you the most birds when you look at them when you get home, you're going to be looking at those birds, and a lot of them, a really high percentage, as long as you're good at setting your exposures manually, are going to be exposed correctly. So let's talk a little bit more about aperture priority, shooting an aperture priority, because it seems like a lot of people like to shoot an aperture priority, and that can be it can be a good way to go for certain scenarios, but not so much for birds in flight, especially because of what we just got done talking about a little bit, and is that the parameter that the meter or the camera based on the meter is going to change is your shutter speed and that is the most important parameter when you're shooting birds in flight it has to be high enough you don't want that shutter speed bopping all over the place from you know bright sky one four thousandth of a second let's say you know mid-tonal trees in the background now it's down to one eight hundredth of a second and then really dark background is down to one two fiftieth of a second you just don't want that kind of variation in your shutter speed when you're shooting birds in flight because shutter speed is so important to helping you get tack sharp images on on your birds because it gives you that fudge factor it stops wings up and down motion it gives you the fudge factor if you're not panning perfectly uh, with the speed of your bird things like that so really you don't want to be shooting aperture priority you can shoot shutter priority and that gives you the control over the shutter speed but again it's the the meter is not going to be metering off of your bird it, the uh, camera is not going to be setting the exposure for your bird more than likely it's going to be doing it based on luminosities of the background again same with auto iso so again full manual exposure is the way to get around this now so you say well okay the bird might be exposed correctly but then i might be blowing out skies and i might be blocking up backgrounds and things like that and i go yeah absolutely that's going to happen but to me if my birds aren't exposed correctly the subject of my images what's happening in the other parts of the of the scene don't matter if i have to block up a, a shadowed background or or blow out a sky to get my bird exposed correctly that's what i'm going to do because again that's the most important thing without a properly exposed bird i generally have nothing in my mind so that's how you deal with that when it comes to the bird itself actually transitioning into different light you have your perfect light out in front with that sunrise but then there's some shadows over here or much brighter area for some reason over here how do you deal with that on the fly when you're shooting full manual exposure well 
I have my main dial, which is right behind the shutter button, so it's easily reached while I'm shooting, set to change an, an exposure parameter, let's say uh, aperture. And so as it's transitioning into shadows, I see that happening, I'll just make a quick adjustment. It doesn't have to be super accurate. It just has to keep the bird from getting too, too dark or too, too bright. You can always make some adjustments and adjustments in post-processing, you know, based on shooting raw images, you got some adjustment uh, possibilities there, some, some uh, malleability of, of, your, of your raw images. So that's how I deal with that. And the thing is about that, those transitions like that, you can predict that a lot easier and it tends not to happen so quickly and it tends not to happen as often as these transitions from like sky down against trees back up the sky and things like that so making that adjustment is much easier than making the adjustment in the changes as a bird flies against all these different background brightnesses so that's really it that, these are the points i wanted to make about exposure when you're shooting birds in flight again you want to be able to get the exposure right on your bird and any of the priority uh, modes are not going to be basic. They're just not going to be metering off of your bird. Bird again, unless that bird is filling the frame, I mean really filling the frame, which is, is unusual for bird photography, especially birds in flight, you know, it's going to be taking into account the luminosity or the brightness of the background as well. And the way to get around that is to shoot full manual exposure. So if you found this video informative and you liked it, please subscribe because it's subscribers that keep this channel going. Until next time, have great light, take great images, be safe, and I'll see you soon.